Hello. Hi. I'm a little petrified, so I'm going to try not to ramble. Um, I was hoping that uh, either or both of you could speak to two points. Um, the first being um, what particular challenges you find in creating um, continuity work as opposed to something like fan work, which is where I think many of us start um, as fans of this content. Um, and then uh, to address one particular challenge that I've been curious about um, in your experience, which is the introduction of new characters into a continuity. Um, I'm most familiar with um, James's work, so uh, I guess in the case of, say, Pharma or Tarn, um, particularly antagonists, uh, mm -hmm. what sort of do you find yourself grappling with uh, when it comes to creating um, a new character, and what do you think makes those characters stick or become successful, um, especially when you take risks with creating antagonists. Okay. Hmm. Who's going to go first? <laughs> <laughs> on those that very well-constructed two it, questions. No, it's, yeah, it's a great yeah. question. I mean, yeah. well, what I will tell you in practice, you know, sometimes the truth is really unromantic. And, you know, and when we were doing it in the 80s, but our new characters were dictated to us by Hasbro. Now they came with nothing. Okay, you know you have, you know you have a dump truck, and you know he's called Dumpster Fire, and you know, and, and, and you know, you're just, you're just giving these ideas away. Yeah, right. I'm just feel free to write Dumpster I'm Fire up him. as a he's character. character okay? now. You know, they'll be, they'll, yeah, they'll be Dumpster <laughs> Fires as far as the eye can see. Right. Exactly. Yeah. You know, so you got you got Dumpster Fire, and and he's a Decepticon dump truck. You know, I mean. I mean, it, it, I mean, anybody ever think about why Constructicons or you know, Decepticons? I don't know. But it, anyway, so you got Dumpster Fire. And, and, but he come, came with nothing attached to him. So we'd have to figure out, well, what would Dumpster Fire talk like? We, we would engineer from the product to reality. You know, well, he's kind of a blue collar character. Or you could play opposite that. And you could say, you know, he talks like him. And he's this really, you know, yeah, really kind of and, high, high, yeah, you know, highbrow, you know, Dumpster Dumpster fire dump truck who, you know, has been horribly, you know, I mean, you see, you either play with, the, you know, with the instinct or against it. But, and, and if you're doing him as dumpster fire, you know, then, you know, then you're figuring out, well, how did this incredibly highbrow truck, you know, become named dumpster fire in his life is one long indignity, right? You know, if, if you're doing me as dumpster fire, then, you know, he's probably, you know, some dump truck who got rejected by the Autobots and is really pissed off and he's got a ship on his shoulder. It, it, does that make any sense? You know, yeah. I mean, okay. And, and that, that's, that's what you do with the characters. Other characters come in to fill a hole in your story. And, and they're bridges, you know, in, you know, fiction's kind of it's complicated, but it's kind of about synapses and it's making the bridges between two concepts. OK, you know, and so, you know, you could, you know, have a whole story about, well, why are Chris Constructicons, you know, but, you know, uh, why are they Decepticons and not Autobots? They seem like they should be Autobots. And it's the origin story of Constructicons, which turns on the sad story of Dumpster Fire, you know, that, you know, yep. and he begins to becomes the jet fire of, of <laughs> trucks, you know. Right. Oh, oh. Yeah. Sorry. I'm not going to let you speak first from now. <laughs> Well, they, uh, look, they want to do dumpster fire. They did. I can, I, I can, there's ripples we, of enthusiasm. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And, this, yeah. all right, and this is now pre-marketed because we had people laughing yeah. about it. Yeah. So Focus I mean, groups, if, thank you. If some studio doesn't buy it, they lose, you know. <laughs> <laughs> um, that, that was a really good answer. I mean, yeah, I was going to say, because the, 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 you, you asked two things, didn't you? The second question was about character, creating characters and, you know, what do you, what, what do you bring to that process? How do you do it to make it work? Um, and, yeah, it, it, sometimes you'll just, you'll, you'll need uh, the character to plug a gap to, to, to bridge concepts or ideas or, or some sort of instigating factor. Um, I guess that's more, so that's a plot-driven character insertion, really. Yeah. Um, and other times, if you're creating one which you want to have some sort of lasting impact, then the first question is, well, why, what, what, what is different about this, this person? Uh, what, what sets this person apart from pre-existing characters? Um, and it's not... 
it's not really super scientific really you just need to think of something which uh, differentiates them um and i guess it's it's it, to, to to cast it in a transformers sort of sense think back to the tech specs really or bob Budiansky's profiles you know there was there was a distillation there was uh, of the character in those in, in a few sentences you got a handle on what on what that what that person was really um and if you can't think of that if you can't think uh, what makes them different from the others then you know maybe you don't need that person really um and you mentioned farmer, didn't you? You mentioned yes. farmer in your question, yeah, yeah. And, and tarn. tarn, yeah. Um, I mean, so those those became uh, well. One was an antagonist, an antagonist from the beginning. The other one became one. Um, that's a combination, actually, in both cases of of plot, plot and character um, necessity, really. And, and you know what? With with you, lot as wonderful as you are, um, they, I'll, I'll create. There'll be like a toaster in the background for one panel, yeah. and you know, you'll write a 19-part fan fiction about <laughs> about, about the toaster, you know, yeah, and it'll be better than what I do. So it's not. Yeah, it's a double-edged sword. Yeah, it's sometimes you're kind of creating a puzzle. I mean, I realized that rewatching Five Faces of Darkness, which I hadn't seen until like last Monday, I hadn't seen since I wrote it. But I realized, you know, I, it, the whole purpose of that work was to create this just TARDIS and mess of stuff for people to follow up on later in season three, because it was the pilot for season three, right? And, and so we created all sorts of characters I'd utterly forgotten about. And I, I cut to 30 years later, I'm sitting there with Chris Metzen and all of a sudden, you know, Omega, uh, Ryan Pax and, and Zeta Prime, you know, show up and, and I, I have no idea who these characters were. <laughs> you know, I had no idea because you know, I'm this guy now. <laughs> and I don't remember what the, you know, young, lively version of myself thought, right? I, I've for, utterly forgotten creating these guys. But you start sometimes a character's a question. You know, or you ask a question, you know, I mean, you could look at that very, very well and look at Blitzwing. And if you started with the question, you said, what to makes a Decepticon turn into an Autobot? OK, which is effectively what I think happened in that that episode, though nobody followed up on it. But you could say, OK, what happens to this character? He betrayed Megatron. Obviously, Megatron's give him a wedgie or Galvatron or, you know, whatever, <laughs> you know, later on. And, you know, he's pariah. What, ha what, what, you know, what happens with this outlaw renegade character? And that can lead to some Transformers version of Good, the Bad and the Ugly out in, you know, some weird planet, you know. Or it can lead to you know, a full conversion or it can lead to him trying to, you know, take control of the Decepticon. You can go anywhere you want with it. 